Hey, buddies, Potato Big Whiskey here, and welcome back to the Japanese game. This is Battle Royale Island. We have been embroiled in war since God remembers. Who knows how many years ago it was that we started war. But we have finally found peace. And not only have we found peace, we have found a small measure of prosperity because we are now only half as much science as the AI. Half. <laughs> <laughs> is significantly better, half, is significantly better than one-tenth, which is what it was a while back. In the city of Wambert, uh, most of the problem here comes from the fact that the city is disloyal, losing 50% of its production. Now, the loyalty is increasing at a rate of 15 per turn, so the production will roughly double over the next few turns. And I do think that this city has a campus and a holy site, which is not too bad. I'll go for the granary and the monument in order to try to grow this city and grow its borders. Although the borders don't really need much growth, a monument and granary are pretty baseline. It will also eventually need a builder. I'll probably get a builder out of Yaskilia. I'll probably purchase a builder out of there, send it over here, improve these tiles. Uh, it doesn't have a huge amount of tiles, but the tiles that it does have are worth improving, in my opinion. I do wonder if Huey Toa Kali is still available. I don't have it unlocked, and it's kind of out of my way technologically. I'll consider Huey. It would help out significantly, because I do have a lot of lake tiles in my empire. So if I were to, like, slap down a Huey, a Huey Louie, say, oh... Like, let's say I did, like, a harbour. Hypothetically, if I did a hypothetical harbour and a Huey, I would have much better lake tiles across my entire empire. So I, I may consider going for the Huey after I have cartography. Um, but I, I'm not sure where I'll put the Huey. It really just depends on where I can get the production. This is probably the most productive city that I have. So this will be where I get it, almost certainly. Um, and to that end... I would like to have Magnus, so I may just crack Mab Magnus into that city and see what happens. I will get myself a lumber mill because it's a 2-3 tile, a very highly productive tile, helping this city out. Wonderbar, 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 wonderbar. Now, I could settle here, one, two, three, one, two, three. But there's only really three unique tiles here. One of the things you have to consider when you're settling a city in Civ 6 isn't just the fact that you're getting another city, it's the idea of how many tiles are you getting with this city and what is the quality level of these tiles. Now, if I didn't know that there was a new world all the way over here ready and waiting for me to put a settler on it, I would maybe consider settling on the stone and then I could get another copy of all of my districts. But here's the thing. This is not a very good city over here. There's, there's no real justification for settling anything in this area because... One, two, three. All of these tiles are already going to be inside my empire and worked. All of these tiles are going to be inside my empire and worked. So the only tiles I'm really picking up by settling here is a city center tile, a, 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 a wheat tile, and a tundra tile. These tiles are not worth using this settler on due to the fact that I know there's an empty continent in the fog of war somewhere. So for that reason alone, I'm not going to do that. Ah, looks like people want to stop my military emergency. I'll vote it down in the hopes that it stops because I really don't want to be at war again. Oh, oh it's the two people I don't care about. Never mind. Uh, we have unlocked guilds. I don't think this really changes our plans. We did, don't have a good Chichen Itza here. Uh, now, Wilhelmina is... I don't remember where... Well... Inca is over here, and I assume Wilhelmina is somewhere in that direction as well. So, we managed to pick ourselves up the barracks in this city, so we have a nice food growth rate, or rather, housing and production in here. I'm thinking that because I already have some extra food tiles here... So let me think about how I'm going to plan the city. I have two tiles here with a surplus of one food, and then I have two tiles here with a deficit of one food, which means I can turn this into a lumber mill, no problem, or I could chop. Um, I don't think I can get adjacency from this Huey. I could theoretically get adjacency from this Huey, putting it here on this theater square, but I don't think that's worth it. So I'll just put the Huey here for maximum, uh, for maximum amenity adjacency. Um, so because uh, for every tile that makes three food, you can work one tile that makes one food. For every tile that makes four food, you can work one tile that makes zero food. So both of these tiles feed these two tiles because you always want to make at least a minimum of two food per tile, ideally more, ideally a lot more. In fact, so much more ideally that I may actually swap, swap this farm triangle over here in order to give 1,000 science deficit a food 
a surplus. And then when this city has its harbor, it'll be able to work these coastal tiles to keep growing because it has a strong growth tile here. And as long as I'm working a reasonable amount of extra food, the city will grow at a reasonable rate. Besides, it's already at its like housing limit. Uh, regardless of having that farm. So I'm going to give this farm to 100 science deficit to allow the city to grow much faster. And that also, by having three tiles that are making bonus one food, uh, I justify harvesting this deer and putting another lumber mill here, which will give this city a very, very powerful production line. It'll be up somewhere in the region of 20 production and I get a produ production chop out of it. Now, if I'm considering uh, what my next moves are, I could get the Statue of Zeus, but that would erase some pretty good tiles here. I could go for the university, which is worth plus four science. I do think, however, that I'm going to be going for cartography. And the second that I get cartography, I'm going to want to basically embark settlers out. So this is not a bad candidate. If I were to, if I were to do that, I could go for the university and that would help. Or I could just go for a settler here and have a settler ready and waiting to go embark. I think that would be a pretty neat and reasonable thing to do. This city has absolute dog doo-doo for production. It's going to need a trade route to help it out. Well, there's Portsmouth. Now, we could take Portsmouth. It does have what looks like medieval walls. So it has medieval walls, so it'll be quite tough to take. It'll have 2,000 fortification strength. So I would probably at least want to have crossbowmen and maybe bombards. Her tech is quite a bit higher than mine. So it's a hard call to make. Yeah, it's, just, it's hard to know. But let's get these settlers and stuff positioned so we can be ready to move. So there is buttress and dams. I don't think I have anywhere to put a dam. So we'll just hang on. I will go ahead and repair this copper. Boom. It's a three production, two gold tile. It's a three food tile. It's a two food tile. So the city is going to struggle for food is one of its big problems. It'll have reasonable production. Yeah, it'll have reasonable production and maybe reasonable food once I have the pastures upgraded. I think pastures get extra food at feudalism or stirrups. So stirrups will be an important technology because if I get stirrups, that will turn this into a two food, two production tile, which gives the city a really nice boost stirrups is here so i'll likely pick up stirrups after military tactics and that just gives me a reason to plan and now i can justify putting a pasture on this so that's just kind of that process that you have to think about um how you're improving your tiles why you're improving your tiles what's the consequence of improving your tiles how are things going to work out for you what is the chain of events is it worth doing this now do you delay it for later um, when it comes to making a decision on that front, I'm going to go ahead and appoint Magnus and pop him into 100 science deficit. And I'm also going to pop Victor uh, into Timmy Sharara. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to sit here and wait for five turns or uh, basically for, for, for ages. I'm basically going to sit here and wait because if I do decide to go for the Huey Toa Kali, that is a 710 production wonder. And being able to get a chop here that's worth 77 production plus 50% from Magnus plus maybe another 15% if I could grab the um, this Gothic architecture card. I think I will actually switch and see if I can grab that and plug that in. That would be, you know, a significant shortening of the amount of time that it takes to build a Huey Toa Kali. Is Huey Toa Kali viable in the game? I would say that Huey Toa Kali is somewhat viable. Now, you have to consider what Huey Toa Kali actually does. Uh, it gives you plus one amenity from entertainment for each lake tile within one tile of Huey Toa Kali, plus one food and plus one production for each lake tile in your empire. So if you consider that, Look at these lake tiles. They're one food, one gold. So they're essentially equivalent to coastline. You can see here, lake, lo coastline and lake both get improved uh, at the same rate. Um, but if you look at coastline tiles, I believe shipyards, uh, let me see. Yes, the lighthouse gives you plus one food on all coast tiles in this city, notably missing the word lake there. Okay, very important. The lighthouse gives you plus one food on coast, but not lake. So that means once you have a harbor with a lighthouse, coast tiles are just better than lake tiles. However, if you get Huey Toa Kali, that means that lake tiles are now better because they're plus one food, plus one production. So this is two food, one production, one gold. And then you add on the shipyard, which gives you plus one production on all unimproved coast and lake tiles in this city. Uh, then it starts to equalize a little bit. Uh, but with the lake tiles still winning out, the lake tiles will be two food, two production, one gold. And the water tiles will be two food, one production, one gold. And then eventually you get your way over here to the seaport, which gives you plus two gold on all coast tiles for the city. So if you have the ability to work lake 
and make advantage of them, like I do in this game, in particular in cities like Timisoara, where I'm never going to have anything of use if I don't get a harbour in here. And in fact, I think that's so important that I may have to put Reina in the city eventually and actually just straight up buy the harbour. Um, the the, the Hue Toei Kali makes lake tiles better or equal to, better e equal to coast tiles, and it gives you a little bit of amenities. So uh, for 700 production, like if you consider the things that I can build, that's about three universities. So for the price of three universities in a single city, I get like eh, a good chunk of food and production across my empire. I do think that that is somewhat viable and somewhat worth it. I think it's rare. I think in this particular game, I think it's viable. Rare do I ever find that it is viable. Rare. Oh, that's not good. He's able to cross the ocean. Well then, I didn't see that that was an enemy ship. Right. Um, I'm sitting on two envoys. I will go up to... Uh, I'm going to hold on to my envoys, I guess. So I may have just lost a settler there. However, that is a settler I stole. So not the end of the world if that does end up being true. Um, and I think my scout may be able to escape with my settler to, the, to my own galley. And my own galley has plus five combat strength because he's adjacent to land. I'm just going to go ahead and make some more galleys. Um, because I do have eventually more settlers coming to uh, protect here. And now finally I can go ahead and improve this jade. Not only will this give me an amenity, it makes this tile workable. It's now a two food, two production, one culture tile, which is absolutely workable. This is the phase of the game where any tile that my cities are working, wow, that's weird. He managed to attack my scout, but not my galley. That's very odd. Any, any tile that I want to be working wants to be making at least four yields, right? So if you look at these farms, one, two, three, four, four yields. Uh, if you look at this lumber mill, it's actually five, four production, one food, four production, one food. So you want to be looking for tiles that give you at least four yields. Now, three is OK, but four is what we're looking for. So three, so very, very early game, I would say somewhere in the region of ancient era to the medieval era. Two, you want to be looking for three yield tiles and you're kind of OK with two. Um, once we're into this era of the game, we're looking where we want to get every single city working for yield tiles like Timmy Shorara is really terrible right now because most of the tiles that it's actually working are awful. Like it's working two yield tile, a two yield tile, a two yield tile with a food deficit here. Really, really terrible stuff that's going on in this city. Really bad, really lacking good tiles. And that's just the sacrifice that city has to make for the short term. How much gold does a tile have to have to be considered one yield? I would just say that gold is like worse than most other yields. When I say yields, I'm talking about food and production. I don't even consider uh, culture and gold. Like it just is irrelevant. I'm, I'm only looking at the food and production. Gold culture, not even a consideration. Almost, almost never. There are situations where I might consider them, but basically never am I considering the gold yield of a tile. So if I'm thinking about my capital city, uh, what I definitely need is a builder to improve this and this because I want farms here. I could definitely use the lighthouse for the food and the growth. I could definitely use a settler. Have you planned for the mausoleum? I theoretically, I could get the mausoleum in 25 turns and get another plus two adjacency on this theater square. It's it's like a possible thing to do. Mausoleum is just like the go-to wonder here. Like every single game do I go for the mausoleum to, to a point where it's kind of almost like a joke, like it's a meme, you know? Uh, you know what? I'm going to lean into the meme. I really do. I'm really going to struggle to grow this city if I don't go for the harbor here next, even though I really want to be going for the industrial zone. I think the harbor is necessary for me to go for next. I will finish the arena. I do have a builder here with two charges. I'll go ahead and send him back to improve this. He did a good job exploring for me while I was considering whether or not I wanted to use him for this. So it looks like my enemies have ran off, which is good. I'm making good money. Nobody wants to buy my luxuries though, which is kind of unfortunate because I do have stuff to sell. Right, there's divine right. Now, the real question is, it takes me five turns to go for cartography. I could put three turns into diplomatic service and then switch to naval tradition. And I think that's what we might do. The, the really nice thing about cartography as well is it gives you plus two gold on your fishing tiles. So my fishing tiles will get quite a bit better over the next few turns. I got my campus in Okayama. This city is going to struggle to grow without a harbor. It's already at its growth limit. Long term, the harbor will also give it, a, it'll give it a ton of food, a ton of housing, a ton of gold. 
So a harbour is just a, a, a really good building to build when you're when you're in a coastal empire. It just always is a good building. Now the question is, do I go for the harbour or do I go for the library? The library helps me catch my way into the game. I should at least be getting my libraries and my campuses. Anything beyond that I think we could have a debate about. But I definitely want to place my harbour and I'll also place my campus. How important is it that I get this campus over this harbour? And I think the campus is perhaps more important then the harbour, because I'm still behind in science and I need to catch up, even though that's going to take 25 turns. I should also now consider switching around my government. I don't need aesthetics anymore. I really would like to keep it plugged in because it is a nice little chunk of production or uh, of culture, rather. I definitely need Gothic architecture in the next few turns because I'm going to be going for things. What I would really like is serfdom to improve my builder charges, but I'm going to plug in Gothic architecture because I'm, I'm actually building wonders as we speak. And then I may switch out natural philosophy and urban planning for serfdom and for colonization here soon. My empire is going to be stretched a little bit thin. It's trying to do an awful lot at once, but I'm, I'm slowly increasing the quality of my land, which is going to pay dividends. Uh, like Eleanor, you know, people, people are still climbing ahead of me faster than I can catch up, but that's okay. Now, here's the thing. Harbor would be super powerful, but another thing that I can do that's super powerful is actually just build settlers. Like, just build an insane amount of settlers and settle this new island. Now, I do hope that nobody's gotten there first. I have a quarry chop here. I could use the quarry chop to get a, get a, get a university faster, and I will do that. Because this is the city I'm going to go for a university. So Wambert's tile quality now is way higher, if you could see here. It only has three population, but it's working at least two food in each of these tiles. It'll soon be able to work this sheep. Um, and when the sheep gets upgraded, we can then work the crabs. And then we can work the, the, the gold. So qu quite good quality mixture of gold production and, and food here. Um, I'm quite happy about that. Usually that's what I'm looking for in that order. I'm looking for, in the order of, I'm looking for two food, then as much, much like, then maybe one to two production. If I can't get one to two production, then maybe I'll go like three food, one production. And then if I can get a little bit of gold on top of that, then I'm happy. That's kind of the setup that I go for. So I cracked out a settler in a hundred science deficit. We're okay to stay the course. I could crack out another settler. It's an option. Like the gamble here is that there's an untold amount of land on the other end of the rainbow. And I think that's a totally reasonable gamble for me. So I'm going to put a farm here, not because it's particularly useful, but because it gives me half a housing in this city and it'll prov provide me with a neutral food tile, a two food, one production tile, which is basically like I'm getting one production from this from this citizen. I really, man, I really still think citizens should just innately yield some production. I really do need to get around to making my own balance mod. It just, it just needs to happen. Because it feels wrong to have a high pop city working only food and not getting any production, not being able to build anything. Like lots of people are capable of doing things. So we have cartography here. Casa de Contracion. This is an interesting wonder we won't be building. Caraval and plus two goals from fit. So most importantly here, I can now safely embark across the ocean. So now that we have diplomatic service, we have to make some serious changes to our government because we're going to be looking to get some spies out so that we can steal stuff from the AI. So let's have a look here. We're going to take away charismatic leader and instead we're going to plug in Machiavellianism. And now that we're significantly, now that we're like making a ton of settlers, I think it is worth plugging in the colonization card. And I think I'm going to plug it over uh, natural philosophy. I'm okay with my science tanking here because I'm gambling on the fact that I will find a really powerful island. I'm also going to be plugging in the serfdom card in the near future. The question is, is urban planning better than natural philosophy? And I think it is temporarily because I have way more science than I have production right now. So I'm okay losing my science here um, because I'll be able to get it back in the near future. Oh, heartbeat of steam. Oh, I just completely shit the bed. What the? No, what have I done? <sighs> All right, never mind. <sighs> We're going to plug in heartbeat of steam because it gives me extra production towards wonders. Uh, although not the wonders that I need. But more importantly, it gives me campus uh, district science adjacency provide production. I don't care about reform the coinage. I don't have, I only have one trade route. I do actually kind of care about Hicks on Dracones, Dracones, because I could, um, it would make it settling the, it would make settling the other continent easier and I would get more population in those cities. However, however, this is just better. This is just like, because like, look, 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 I have six adjacency in my capital. I double that, that goes to 12. That's 12 production. It's eight production, eight production, four production, six production, four production. It's so much production in my empire. I'm sorry. What does this, what, what does this give me? Plus three population for city settled on a different continent. Whoop, T, do. Whoop, T, do. Quicker settle, whoop, de do. Who cares if I settle? I'm going to get them anyway. I, 
This lets me build more settlers. Three pop is like 80 turns. Your mom is like eight turns. She loves it, okay? This is obviously the better choice. Per city, this lets me build like 10 more settlers. There's no way. There's no way this is better. The movement? I'm gonna get there anyway. It is so good, but this is better. This is objectively better. Two extra movement on the sea. One. It's here! It's right here! Shut up, chat. You're wrong. Alright, I gotta research naval tradition so I can change my government quickly. Look how much faster I'm- I'm building this in 10 turns! Did you never finish your campus? Oh, unholy Christ on a bicycle. Ugh. But look, this is 10, like I'm getting six production from campus. I'm sorry, you're wrong. You're all wrong. This is literally going to double the production in my empire, okay? I am so starved for production that I'm choosing seven production, one production per city over natural philosophy, okay? You're just wrong. And not only are you wrong, your mom, that too. Oh my God, I found Johannesburg and I can take Susan T. City to save plus one production for every improved resource type. <gasps> Yoink, give me that Susan T. Look at these virgin, unsettled lands that are one, two, three, four, five, five tiles in water away. Okay. What you want me to get plus two movement on my settlers so I can cut down a one, two, three, a four turn journey to a one, two, three, four, to a three turn journey. Shut up, dude. You're just wrong. Okay. You're wrong and bad. Now, now I get to do the fun thing whereas I plan on my cities. Look how long it takes to get the three pop on the new cities. Dude, I'm going to be getting five charge builders in every single one of these cities. I could do whatever I want in the new world. Just meant if that quarry attached. Yeah, it's it, this. I If I ever take this quarry away from Timmy Shoara, the city is dead. It is the only source of production that the city has, okay? There's this olive tile giving it one production, and then this stone tile giving it two production. None of the other tiles that this city works gives it production, okay? It is literally getting no production from anywhere. It, the only reason this city has any production is because I just got suzerainty of Johannesburg. Oh man, there's a Pantanal, Pantanal, Pantanal. Pre we're preserving Pantanal. 100%. We're preserving it. I'm sorry. It has to happen. How long is the current age? 38 to 58 turns. Oh, I might not be able to because of the way these city-states are settled. But like, look, we've got like marble here that I can get suzerainty of. Mm, where do I settle here? I don't want to settle on the marble. Well, do I? I could settle there. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. I could have these two cities cooperate with their districts. Let's have a think here. Get fisheries in Timishoara. Oh, that's actually genius. Oh, that actually is a good idea. Good call. It's a good way for me to get the production in that city. Yeah. Timishoara, I, I never think of using that ability ever because I always think of it as just like a huge waste to build the charges. But this is maybe the one situation where fisheries are actually like going to save my bacon. Yeah, good call. Good call. I think I need more information before I commit to a settling pattern. All right, so there's naval tradition. We're going to go ahead and take out Gothic architecture because it has nothing on natural philosophy. We're going to keep urban planning, colonization, and natural philosophy. Maybe I could plug in serfdom now. I think I will plug it in over that. Yeah. I really do want to have Gothic architecture plugged in, but it's just, I don't have enough, I don't have enough card slots. That's just reality. Huey Toakali is a 30 turn build in here. Okay, we'll get it after the settler. Let's go ahead and pick up mercantilism for the plus one camp, plus one food, plus one production on camps. I will be harvesting that deer. So I got my library in Okayama and it's absolutely settler time. We are just going mad. There's a rush for the new world, boys. You could have chopped before removing the wonder card. Ah, oh, yeah, I could have, but that's fine. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a huge optimization, so it's not a big deal that I didn't do it. Oh, more marble. Oh. Oh, Laurasia will be mine. I think I'm going to try to settle efficiently. And by that, I mean as few cities as possible. Oh, a free builder too. That's incredible. I can send that right to Timishara. You're my settler escorter. The religious city state over here. How much is Machiavellianism helping you here? I mean, how much is other things helping me here? This gives me the option to go into spies if I choose, especially with my high production. I'm going to go ahead and pick up mass production because this is going to be a great way for me to improve the production of my cities because it gives a uh, plus one food as a baseline, which is pretty valuable, but it also gives you a uh, bonus production equal to the adjacency bonus of the Harbor district and plus one production on all unimproved tiles. What I would really like to see um, for not Civ 7, but usually they do a game in between like 
Civ games, I would like to see them do an, a completely economic game. So like, you don't, there's no war. It's like a completely economic, you know, you build buildings, you build cities and you uh, compete. And maybe there's like a little bit of conflict, but it's like very much so not war. I think that would be like, imagine like, like Civ 6 or Civilization, I don't know, corporations or something. You know what I mean? A competitive tycoon, a 4X game. I think that would be sick as hell. So let's think about what we're going to do here in terms of settling. I definitely feel like, th let's talk about why we're settling here. One of the reasons you might do this sort of settling is for tourism. So this is kind of where the fork in the road begins for us. How are we going to win this game? Now we've already dominated one person's capital. So that does theoretically make tourism harder for us. However, we are also playing Japan, and so our theater squares are half price. If you want to buff Japan, by the way, give them preserves a half price too. That would be sick as hell. It would make them a really cool uh, culture sieve. Um, so we can build theater squares in half the time. So that's a direction we can go. We can do tourism -y stuff. And fresh, newly settled lands are really easy to do tourism -y stuff because you can plan out all your tourism placement before you, before you actually, like, get down to business does japan need a buff i would say like i mean need a buff you could sometimes you can just buff things sometimes you can just choose it my instinct here is to settle on the marble i have here potentially we're setting up here so we have two reefs on the coastline and we have a mountain here so settling these right are all roughly equivalent except for this one right here now the problem with settling the marble is that i can't settle another city here to make use of this reef so if i'm if i'm doing this i get i, I don't get to play into the urbanization of japan very much whereas if i move this settlement down one tile i can settle here and i could theoretically go for some sort of uh you know thing and i could put districts in between and do a lot of cooperation and get a lot of high adjacency alternatively I could do seaside resorts if I wanted to go for some kind of tourism. Where the hell is the seaside resort button? Why is it so difficult to find? Am I, am, am I actually just blind? How? Why can I never find it? Fishery. There. So we could seaside resort this and not play into our adjacency at all as Japan. Do you know what I mean? And if we were to put a quarry here, we could like plant forest. We could play with adjacency and do all that sort of stuff and sort of play out of Japan's normal power. I do think that Japan is quite good at going for a science victory too, if we, if we so choose. Only if you have the appeal, we can make the appeal. Okay, what's this? This is four, this is, four. This is three, this should be one. Forest, forest, that makes it three. Yeah, we can, we can get the appeal in here, no problem. Especially if we decide to go for the Eiffel Tower and the Crystal Redden Tour. I, I, I think personally I'm less enamored with the um, Seaside Resort play. And I'm more interested in playing to Japan's strengths and going for high adjacency districts. Because that seems more of like an interesting way to play. The question is, am I going for two campuses here or am I going for one? Now, two campuses are obviously better than one. But however, that does force the second city to come down here and settle on this tundra. Settling on this tundra is not the worst thing ever because I could, in theory, go ahead and get myself an industrial zone here. It would be a plus two. It would be another plus one with the quarry. If I were to get myself an aqueduct here, that would be a plus six industrial zone. This would power my coastline. Maybe perhaps there would be a one, two, three. There'd probably be another city, maybe on the deer tile that would also be getting powered and it would be one, two, three. It would be putting its campus over here, for example. Uh, I would almost certainly go for a harbor in each of these cities to feed them. Uh, so that'd be one, two, three. You are building one, two, three districts. You're building one, two districts. And then the third district in here would maybe be like a theater square or something, right? Um, and that way I have like a bunch of really high adjacency districts, which is a ton of fun. And then I can maybe do something with this one over here. You know, this is the kind of fun stuff you can do. This industrial zone would serve all four cities that I plan. But if you had three pop when you first settled, who cares? Who cares if I have three pop? Look, at I'm going to have really highly productive tiles and grow these cities really quickly anyway, because I'm getting a free builder with every single one of these cities. I'll be able to improve this. Now, the other thing that we could do is we could, you know, we already have theoretically enough science between all these old cities and we could dedicate the new world towards generating as much tourism as possible, which would mean that this city, one, two, three, 
could perhaps settle a little bit closer and we could play even harder into Japan's strength, but in a different direction, right? So we could go for, like, we could put an entertainment complex here to hit all of the cities. We could go for a theater square, a theater square, and a theater square, and maybe, like, a campus right there. And then we have, like, a huge amount of culture in this area. We've got a amenities covered. We've got production covered. We've got lots of stuff. We could even maybe consider getting, I don't know, something on these coastlines later on in the game. Uh, then the other option we have is to completely just carpet the new world in preserves, national parks and holy sites and just turn it into like a religious, uh, cultural, you know, experience. So how do we want to win the game? I think that's the hardest thing we have to, we have to come. The hardest thing we have to, now personally, I'm a big fan of if there's a new world game, I like to actually turn it into a paradise. Like I, I barely improve any tiles. I mostly plant forests. There isn't enough turns left to build everything in the new cities. I agree with that take. I think in my last game, my last two games, I've gone for hard teching science and then domination as well. So this game, I went for a domination and I think it would be more interesting if I went into tourism. I don't want to do religion or I can't do religion. I don't want to do diplomacy. So that leaves me to the, the decision between science and culture. And I think, I think I'm going to go for a culture this game. So culture is the decision. And I think it would be more fun if I were, were to turn this continent into a paradise. But you need to improve AI relations for a culture victory. I think we can pull that off. Their grievances are, you know, the grievances with the AI are going away. There's not long left before people won't have a reason. People don't have a reason to denounce me. The only reason she's denouncing me is because everyone hates me. So if I can get my relationship, if my grievance is down with these other players, eventually I could go into late game diplomacy. The other thing pushing me in the direction of potentially going for a cultural play is that we are playing with monopolies and corporations. And so we are going to be getting a slight boost to our tourism from being able to potentially get a monopoly on things like marble. So I, I think tourism is the way to play. And if we're going to go tourism, then we're going to go big and we're not going to go home. Will they peace out? I don't think they've been at war long enough. Oh, maybe they have been. They want 19 gold. No, thank you. They want 21 gold. No, thank you. So personally, I, yeah. So now I have to think about how do I plan this? So let's look at the appeal as it currently stands. And let's look at what we would do. So this is going to be a bad place because if I put a quarry on it. So I think I will settle on the marble in order to eliminate one negative tile that will give me negatives to my stuff. Now, if I settle here, where am I putting my preserve? You got to have a preserve. The ideal place would be maybe on the horse, but the horse tile is kind of blocking where I want to put it. Maybe. So settling the marble is kind of a wash, a washed up move. Ah, I see a good move here. So if I were to settle south of the marble, okay, hear me out. Settle south of the marble, place my preserve here, do a national park from horse to coastline. Boom, national park there. All these tiles will get improved. Then I could settle there. Ah, uh, no, that won't work. One, two, three, damn. What if I were to settle there? Uh, no, it's too awkward. What if I settled here instead? Oh, that has potential, maybe. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. I'd have to buy out this tile. Nah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I think I think we we settle here. Entertainment complex here for tourism. Preserve here for the adjacency memes. And then we just let this be its own little self-contained place with like a national park. And that'll be fine. So that's what we're going to do here. It secures me a copy of marble. And that's all it needs to do for the short term. The real question is, do I need to settle coastally? What if I were to move in a tile? If I move in a tile... I can work the marble for production, which I like. I lose an appeal on this tile, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. I have to move the national park slightly, but I would be able to fit in two national parks, maybe. Yeah, I could fit two national parks in this city, which is a ton of tourism. National park here, national park here. Really good AOE adjacency stuff here in terms of like yields from the preserve. Preserve isn't really doing much here. Maybe it should go here instead on the cattle. Preserving the cattle feels a little bit nicer to me. Kind of a pointless mountain, but I use boat mountains in a national park, which is kind of okay. It's not ideal, but I think this is okay for like maximizing a tourism city. And then I have a coastline that I could also put a little bit of, um, like I could plant some forests, maybe get a couple of seaside resorts. Maybe one of the, the, the city states here will offer me a way to get more tourism from a builder charge here in the mid to late game. Like Moai here could be huge. I think I think I think getting suzerainty of Rapa Nui is going to be a late game goal of mine so I can use the Moai to generate tourism. So yeah, I think I think that's the plan. I know we spent a long time there just discussing our plans, but it was absolutely worth it because it, it really gave me a solid idea 
of what I want to do in the late game here. So now I need to do the same kind of plan over here for Pantanal. Pantanal, I'm just going to put a preserve here because it's fun. And I definitely would like to National Park Pantanal. So that would have to be like this. And I can't settle adjacent to this preserve if I want to place that preserve. If I settle here, it seems okay. I could probably squeeze in a National Park or two here as well. I could probably squeak in another National Park. National Park. One, two, three. This would have to occupy a different city, but I can squeak. I want to be getting at least one national park per city, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. So let's settle in place. Boom. Like so. Delete that pin. We'll go ahead and improve the horses and get a really, really good start to the city. So six turns until the next growth. I think I would like to harvest the cattle. So I'll spend just a minute in here. A water mill. If I had a single... Thing in here. We might go to turn like 300 in this game. And so this watermill represents like a good amount of growth and production. Return on investment. So I'm going to go for it. All right, nice. We have access to the shipyard. Perfect. The AI are more advanced than you, but they haven't settled a new world. They will. The AI tends to just struggle to get there quickly. So you usually have a little bit of an opportunity to get there just slightly ahead of them. Um, in terms of industrialization, this is something I would like to pick up is my electronics factory. It's my unique infrastructure that also gives plus four culture to every city in the AOE of the normal factory uh, six tiles AOE. It would be nice to look up NITER, but I might just leave that by the wayside for a very long time because I am planning some infrastructure that might get screwed by NITER. And I'd rather not have to take that in, in, into consideration right now. Let's go ahead and unlock Crossbowman uh, because I'm supremely behind in terms of technology when it comes to my units. Make sure we buy that cattle tile. Hmm. Someone just pointed out to me that somebody is very, very close to a religion victory, which is not good. It looks like Islam is basically dead. Well, no. I can see Islam now. There's like a little bit of Islam. There's a little bit of Hinduism and a lot of Protestantism. So in order to um, in order to try and preserve my position in this game, I think I might get myself an apostle and try to use Hinduism to fight back Protestantism here. So I think this is the holy city of uh, of Hinduism, maybe. Yeah, this is the holy city, although I don't get credit for that. I think I'll grab myself an apostle to see if we can push back the religion a little bit. I got myself a free scout. That's perfect. And a level up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest the cattle. Boom. That'll force the city to both plus one population. Then the city will also grow again the next turn. So it'll be plus three population. And then having started the city at four population wouldn't have mattered at all because you just do one cattle harvest and it's back to where it would have been. Um, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to place the preserve as a priority, and then we'll leave it at that. Nice, we got the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, plus one science, plus one faith, plus one culture on all coastal tiles. Very, very nice, as well as a little trickle of culture. Now, Kilwa, I assume, has already been built. Yeah, it's long gone. Um, but more importantly now, if we look at my capital city, these coastal tiles are very, very workable. I will, however, prioritize these productive tiles until I have a shipyard in my capital. Um, I could get the shipyard relatively quickly, the question is, are settlers better? I think the long-term play is to go for the lighthouse. The short-term play is to go for the settlers. And I'm all about that short-term. Short-term payoff is like a big deal. Let's pick up banking and square rigging so we can head towards industrialization. I know I know, banking isn't necessary for that. Ah, there's Kilwa. Okay. At least we know where Kilwa is. So we know who to kill in the late game. Ah, lovely. We got proselytizer. Proselytizer is the anti-religion promotion for apostles so i should be able to nuclear bomb boom 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 protestantism out of all these cities which is probably not the perfect way to phrase that but listen it's what i said and i have to live with the choices that i've made up until this point Ooh, i would like extra loyalty or extra growth It'd be pretty nice i'm going to say ranged units should have plus five combat strength so wilhelmina has a loyalty problem right now so i'm just going to keep this guy on standby for now so i can maybe convert away she is working on converting me to protestantism so it might be good for me to spend like two charges, just getting rid of Protestantism. Whoa, what did she kill? Where did that come from? Cavalry, all right. Well, we do have access to crossbows now. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll step you forward, upgrade you to a crossbowman and immediately get to work in ancient walls here. We'll do the same here, ancient walls. Um, I need my, where's my other samurai? You, you need to get into this city. So I'm glad I have walls. And stuff. I'm wondering if she'll piece me out actually. So she won't actually take peace, but that's okay. That's her prerogative. I can get a bit of damage on you. I can bring this double shot archer forward. I have a settler coming out of Jasfgilda. Let's keep getting settlers. Well, 16 turns on a settler is a very long turn on a settler. But I think anything over 20 and I will stop building them in those cities. 
because it takes too long. Let's convert the city. Boom, instantaneously converted to Hinduism, slowly fighting back the menace. So if I'm thinking like someone who's trying to make national parks out the wazoo, then there's going to be another national park going here. And then possibly another preserve going here. You have to you have to consider these things very carefully in terms of the positioning because I can't settle adjacent to the preserve. What if mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. settling here? This is the highest quality land in the area. And that would mean preserve here on this stone. The positioning of this, however, makes it very awkward because I can't settle on either of these tiles and I need to settle on either of these tiles to be in range of this preserve. So that actually just doesn't work just as a as a as a as a matter of course, it doesn't work. So this would have to be moved. It's not a good one. It's not a good one. Uh -huh, but what if I move this park down again to here? So I have national park here and here and I put my preserve here. Boom. We've got like maximum synergy between these two cities in terms of national parks and preserves and all that juicy stuff. Oh God, there's so much land here, potentially fur monopoly as well. Fur is here. Let's make sure we put um, markers on those so we mark them out as important. We want to keep an eye on these furs. I need luxuries inside these city state borders because I might, I might just go killing. I'm not going to lie. How do you have a plantation with no resource? What? What? Oh, it's coffee. The symbol just isn't showing. Okay, right. Well, we do have a coffee here. One, two, three. We have access to that. Am I happy with this setup? I don't love this setup. This feels weird. This mountain is causing me issues. I don't love this. Especially a preserve against the ocean is just terrible. The appeal here is incredible. Bang. Quarry down. City's production goes up. We're being murked. It's okay. The cavalry went into the water. You step forward, shoot that lad in the water. He has a bad day. You shoot him. He has a bad day. You come forward, shoot him and then shoot him again. He has a bad day. He's having bad days. They're all having bad days right now. Let's try and use this cavalry to blow out some Protestantism. This is what I get for not teching better units fast enough. Now I have to pick up military engineering to get nitre, to get musketmen. I'll grab castles for coursers and musketmen. Yeah, okay. Forcing my hand here in a way that I do not like. This settler is heading down to this city. I don't know if I'll do this, but that can be a lumber mill. Yoink, 60 faith. I think that's a little bit of a national park. I'll pop this down here. Perfect. Um, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to harvest this cattle. Boom. Immediately put the city up to a higher population level so we can work more tiles. And then I'll come in here. And I think I'd like to place the preserve like so, so I'll buy that tile. Sooner I place the preserve and get it building, the better. I think it would be worth it to get a granary in here because the extra growth means I can work more tiles. Uh, and then border expansion is also good. So I think a granary and a thing in here are really good, but I think I might spend gold on them because the city doesn't have the most amazing production. It has okay production, but not the most amazing is the important piece of information there. Okay, we got a cuirassier over here in Tibishara. So this city now has 50 combat strength, which will mean it'll stand slightly better. We got those Protestant units to run away. We're having a real struggle. Military matters have just been the thing that held me back this entire game. Timmy Shirara might be the city that we lose, but that's okay. Okayama, keep working on settlers for me. Thank you. Crank those bad boys out. Let's convert another city to Hinduism just to keep back the tide of Protestantism. Now, the unfortunate thing about floodplains like this is they're not very good for... They're not very good for things like uh, appeal. They're usually very bad for appeal. So there won't be many national parks happening in that area. Not the end of the world. It's just kind of part of life. Okay, we lost that unit that was to be expected and the damage this lad does is kind of spooky i don't like that i'm losing units very quickly i don't know what the movement range on this thing is five one two three four five you can't get me on the hill i need crossbowmen unfortunately i'll need to build crossbowmen here to stop this rampage that he's on he's killing my units left right and center it's making me look weak to the ai i don't care about losing some of those units because like the horsemen weren't very highly promoted but Maybe next turn I'll have coursers, which might help a little bit. Why no shot from the encampment? I already shot with the encampment. I just did it so fast that you didn't see it because I'm a faster player than you. Now, depending on what she does next turn, I might get a piece with her. Okay, it looks like she fecked off, actually. No, here she is. All right, step back there. Get in the city. Shoot. Now, this is the one unit that I have that has the double shot and massive combat strength. So there we go. We got the kill. I'm wondering if she'll piece me out. I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to spend money on a piece out. I'm just going to condemn her heretics and continue to play my own game of sending settlers to the new world and planning cities out. Talking about my capital, a whole new world. Now that we have the campus here with the extra production that that's going to provide us, settler in 17 turns is pretty reasonable. We'll go for it. Once it starts getting to 20, then I start questioning things. Uh, but there's still tons of land left for us to claim. And remember, 
Land is the thing that wins you the game in Civ 6. It's not it's not actually the number of cities you have, it's how good your land is. Right? If you got good, nice quality estates, then you're in for a win. If you don't, well, you'll be crying yourself away to the losing screen. Oh, the Eye of Sahara, baby. Another natural wonder that we could put preserves on and make it look really cool. Petra City in the New World, that'd be very hard to pull off. Condemn again. I lost my one horseman who was going to help me there, but however, that's life. So I'm going to hold on to this apostle because it's my ace in the, in the hole that'll protect me from potential damage. Um, and I will grab myself a missionary or two to send to the New World in order to convert these to a different religion so that I have a little bit of a resistance against uh, Protestantism. Boom. Plus one envoy. Plus one envoy from a, from a thing is actually quite powerful, especially because we were looking for suzerainty of Rapa Nui. Anyone else give me a tourism generation? Uh, not really. Not really. So Rapa Nui is going to be the big thing for us here that we're going to like try to build a relationship with over the long period of time. All right, things are going real well here. We still have Subahaya. You head here. You head this way. So with mercantilism, uh, camps are now a lot better. So I will be considering not chopping out camps more often. Lumber mills can be built on rainforest, which is a significant increase. And the ability to uh, see the amounts of resources in the world is quite useful. So if we come over here now to the global resource pool, we can see in fact that we have a 50% monopoly on, on silk. Really, a 50% monopoly. It's not good enough. Let's have a look. Where's all the silk? Uh, we were almost lucky. Almost lucky. We have one, two, three, four copies of silk, but we didn't get the, the, the five that we needed to trigger a monopoly bonus, which is unfortunate and kind of infuriating. I thought it was 50% should give me a monopoly. If I control half the world's supply of silk, I should have a monopoly. Are they willing to take peace? 30 gold per turn. What if I gave you like a Diplo favor? 100 Diplo favor would do it. What about 30? So you t you'd probably take 90 Diplo favor. I don't care about, no about Diplo favor. Take the peace and leave me alone. Right? I don't care about being at war with Inca, but I want her to feck off. I don't have any use for Diplo favor, so I'll just yeet it at her. I don't give a damn. Um, I think our next big move is to head towards conservation here. So I'll quickly pick up... I'll quickly pick up civil engineering for the extra builder production and the governor title. I don't think I need the enlightenment for anything. More importantly, I want to get conservation because it'll allow me to receive tourism from walls as well as some other stuff. Now, we did go for Merchant Republic. It's a bit unfortunate, but once we have the new world settled, we can probably build our walls. So I think things are things are looking OK for me as it stands. I'm not in a big panic. Pop a lumber mill down. Boom. Now, that's a productive tile alongside the plantation. The cattle will be getting harvested and replaced with a forest in the late game. But for now, this city is basically done without further investment. Unless I wanted to get a monument in here. 12 turn monument and granary. It means my borders expand. It means I could get that stone pretty quick actually too. He wants peace and he'll pay me. She probably would have paid me next turn too actually if I had thought about it. Yeah, she probably would have paid me for peace because I killed her units and I have more combat strength than her. It's probably unnecessary for me to pay her for peace. Um, but now I am neutral with Patch Cutie and he still doesn't like me. I have too many cities near mountains. Unknown reason. What if I were to establish a resident em embassy? Okay, what about mutual open borders for visibility? All right, cool. Um, how would you like to buy a bit of silk off me? And maybe 40 horses, because I see that you have absolutely zero horses. He'll give you 39 gold per turn. Thanks very much, mate. Appreciate it. How about you? How would you like mutual open borders? Boom, boom. She has a little bit of grievances against me, but she might not have reason to hate me anymore. Uh, how would you like to buy my silk? Would you also like to buy my Diplo favor? Come on then, love. Gives a bit of money there. See you later. Bye bye. Now that is value. We have turned around from being at a 30 gold uh, net positive to being a 100 gold net positive. That is a big advantage. Okay, we finished a water mill, which means um, the city is now growing and producing slightly faster. I think having a granary means that we can work more tiles and the tiles around here are relatively productive with product like they have production on them. So having more population translates into having more production. So I think getting the granary makes sense. And I think I would also like the monument before I got the um, preserve. So we'll go granary monument preserve. That's like a pretty natural order of things as far as I'm concerned. Up here in Shizuoka, I will buy the granary to give this city the ability to continue to grow. Uh, more growth means more districts, means more people working more tiles, which means more yields. Um, theoretically, that's all good for me. I'm going to keep pumping Rapa Nui. I'm going to pump up the jam in Rapa Nui. You're not supposed to go in the water. You're supposed to go in the water. We've got another city on the continent, or another settler on the continent, rather. 
it's time to consider what our third city is going to do over here. We have two kind of disparate cities and we're about to settle our third and a fourth is coming shortly afterwards. So we need to think about securing strategic resources. We need to consider uh, just securing more land. We need to consider what we're going to be doing uh, long term. All that sort of stuff I think we need to put away. Now, I, I, I'm going to continue building walls here because I'm just I'm tired of the vulnerability to attack. Even level one walls it gives you a lot of resilience. We finished the aqueduct in Wambert. Um, let's get the settler, the 13 turn settler. It's a pretty reasonable amount of time. Hang out there, nice and safe. Uh, let's bring our missionaries to the new world to spread our religion. Boom, we can place another city. Uh, unfortunately, these tiles won't be improved, which is kind of a crappy part of life, but we can get an opportunity to do a pre chop. Pre chop. Sorry, I tried to make it sound more interesting than it really is. It's basically just, you know, place it, you place it, you, you chop and then you, you chop on a tile. Like you chop a tile and then you put a district where you chopped it. It's, it's not as cool as it, it sounded. Any pre-choppers? Did you forget about your quick deals mod? It's up here. I can still use it. But like, she pays one gold for things. Like, the reason I don't use the quick deals mod right now is because everyone hates me. So any diplomacy I'm doing, I'm doing it when I'm like checking other things. All right, let's have a little bit of a think. Where am I going to put this trade route? Let's think, right? We could get an absolute rake of gold from trading internationally. We could get a little bit of science, a little bit of stuff. I think now that we're going to be moving into more of a diplomatic stance, look, people are starting to not hate me quite as much. This is the hope for the future. There is hope. So I think if I start trading with Egypt, I will actually improve my relationship with her, potentially to the point where she will consider not denouncing me again on cooldown. So if I can get a trade route with her this turn, maybe send her a gift. Any gifters? Any Twitch Prime gifters? Yeah, if I send her a gift of iron, like boom, here you go, here's 20 iron, right? Boom. And I just give that as a gift, maybe with like 100 gold on top. Boom. Her relationship now has plus 10. She's less likely to denounce me in two turns. She probably denounced me anyway, but um, if I can start getting positive relationship, I can start getting alliances. And if I can start getting alliances, I can really take advantage of some of the things. I need to think about getting spies. I'm going to grab myself a quick spy here at five turns. I have room for potentially two in the near future. All right, let's go ahead and buy this tile. We will go ahead and har... No, no, no. So we buy the tile. We have a tile that we want to use. So we're going to delete this pin. We're going to open up this thing. Make sure you have the construction queue available. We're going to get rid of this. Now you can see, if I were to build a preserve, it would take me 138 turns. But because I'm going to come in here and while the city queue is empty, I'm going to go ahead and harvest this tile. Now it'll take me 87 turns to build this preserve. Boom, preserve is placed. So even though I was placing the preserve on the tile that I was chopping, I was able to chop the tile. So that's a really, really important piece of information that you're going to be using in all of your games going forward. I'm also going to chop, chop, chop all of these tiles once I have Magnus over there. Uh, so I have a question here. Do I improve this quarry to give it plus two production or do I harvest it to get all the production immediately? Uh, that's actually not a trivial question. I think because it's on flatland and it's not on a hill, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to look for the best trade route with Egypt. There it is. Although it's significantly worse than some of my other trade routes, but it will get better over time. Memphis here is 10 gold, actually. Yeah, let's go for the Memphis trade route. That's 10 gold. That'll hopefully... Oh, yes, friendship. All right, lovely. We're friends with the Dutch. So that means um, getting a friendship with a Dutch means she can't attack me for 30 turns. You cannot declare war to a friend. This is perfect. Um, it also means that now I'm going to be getting favorable trade deals with her. This is also perfect. How much? She's actually selling her great works for a very cheap price. 17 gold per turn is a steal. So I'm going to grab those great works for the trickle of uh, cult, uh, tourism. Tourism trickle right now. It's starting to become a thick stream. Now she can also convert all your cities. Eh, she can try. I can still fight her units. I, I'm pretty sure I can still religiously fight her. Fight me religiously. No longer IRL. In the heavens is where we battle. So I need to plan some more cities. I think I may settle this city almost exclusively just to pick up a little bit of nitre and to claim the land in and around here. Potentially really good uh, Rapa Nui stuff. Now the Moai, the Moai statues can be placed on basically anything but desert um, that has no forest nearby. And this is like a deforested area, so I might be able to get a, I might be able to squeeze in a few more eye in around here. And um, these will be forests. So I'll probably suggest to uh, probably settle like have a look at the appeal. 
Um, the appeal isn't great here. I'll probably settle between the niter, that way I can improve both niters and get a huge production boost in here. And then use this as a city to produce builders for my whole empire over here. And also I seal up all of these tiles that the AI could potentially settle on. So I'm going to, this city is not going to be getting a huge amount of tourism. It's mostly going to be using Moai statues and uh, these two niter tiles to just boost. I think I am going to get the quarry here. 2-2 two, two tile is better than a 2-0 tile, even if I don't get the chop. And the chop is like the best part. It's like the, uh, you know, it's the beef at the center of a beef wellington, the chop is. And look how huge this continent is. There's so much land that we can potentially exploit here. Uh, getting gunpowder is also a big deal because it gives my quarries plus one production. Very good. We have civil engineering. Let's make sure that we plug in the plus two builder charge card again. But other than that, we'll be sort of staying the course. You could make an argument for veterancy. And I think I will plug in veterancy because I do plan to build some harbors here this game. We're rigging. Movement for embarked units wouldn't be bad. I'll just quickly grab that. Um, I have civil engineering. Now we're rushing conservation because we want to be able to plant forests. And not only that, but we also want to be able to get tourism from our walls. I, oh, this is a hard choice. I think I'm going to go for zoning, sorry, aquaculture on Liang. As much as I really, really, really want to be making my way towards contractor on Reina so I can use my gold to buy districts or potentially even surplus logistics or something like that. I think this is the right move because now we can start placing fisheries in Timisoara. And this city will actually no longer be useless because it actually has production. So quite happy about that. Things are turning up Millhouse and so on and so forth. Oh, Egypt is offering me open borders. She likes me. Guys, Cleopatra sent me a DM. And she said I'm kind of cute. Thank you, Cleopatra. I appreciate it. I'm, I am, uh, I'm married to, uh, to God, though. I appreciate it, though. All right, that's going to be it, though. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.